Hey everybody, I'm Russo, and I do a little work here and there. Looks like it's time for another episode of Research What? And this time we're doing things a little bit differently. Instead of just getting on the internet and Googling something, we're going to do an experiment. The first of many, I assure you. And this one is on using rubber cement as a water effect. We're going to start with a list of ingredients. Keep in mind, your mileage may vary. But I'm going to make a little sample tile. Going to need cardboard. Of course, rubber cement. Got this watercolor paint. You know, high pigment content or whatever in a selection of colors blues grays yellows browns whatever you need there are going to be a few other materials but i will mention those as i go but you know materials it is what it is we'll get these out of the way and move on to step number one how not to draw a circle how not to draw two circles the inside circle is going to get cut out all of the way and the outside circle just the top layer of paper is going to get removed of course that's just the beginning we're going to use that piece to cut out a second layer and we're going to do basically the same thing with that except we're not going to cut a hole all the way through it as you can see i've traced the hole from the first layer and i've drawn some sort of relief shapes in there those will remain the rest will get cut out after that we'll stack everything up and stick it together and we'll have a decent piece of relief to fill with whatever water product we'd like. I'm probably going to reuse this eventually. Before sticking it together though, I'm going to need to mush down some of these corrugations and make the slope between the layers a little more even. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, we're not building an inverted step pyramid here. So as you can see, I have scissors at the ready and I'm just going to use the back end of these to push the corrugations down a little. After that, I'm going to go easy mode and just cover the whole thing with masking tape. This will be a decent base for whatever else I want to do, and it'll stick everything together. Oh, if I just had some sort of glue. Oh well. The tape turned out alright regardless, and now I'm on to something that I showed but didn't name, a piece of ready grass mat. And I'm going to use this in conjunction with this crappy hair dryer so I can get it to match the relief that I've created already. That might take a little while, especially if you're using relatively low heat like I am, but eventually it will get into shape and you can worry about gluing it down. I'm just going to use some easy tack, and that should work well enough. Of course, after you get the grass mat glued down, you're going to have to remove the grass where you want water to be, unless you want grass under the water, and that's cool. But taking the grass off is exceptionally easy. You just get it a little wet, and then scratch it, and you'll have all of that extra clump flocking to do with what you will. Once you get to that point, it's probably a good idea to start painting the basin. I've started with a sort of brownie color, but before I put each layer of rubber cement on, I'm going to paint a thickish layer of blue on the area where it's going to be applied. With any luck, the toxic stuff in the rubber cement will melt that paint and it'll diffuse through that particular layer of the rubber cement. Just be prepared for the shrinkage. Coincidentally, this is what a layer looks like after it's cured, and um, yeah, it is a little underwhelming. So we will move on. And here you can see the real problem. When you put it on, it's super thick, it's a little cloudy, that's not too big a problem. But that last layer was as thick as this one when I poured it. So between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick. And after it cured, it was maybe a sixteenth of an inch thick. And you know, this is just one problem that we're gonna run into. After that layer cures, you take a look at it and you notice, hey, bubbles. Now, chances are some of these bubbles are for me putting watercolor down and just not waiting until it's completely dry but I figure a lot of them are probably just due to the curing process plus you know this shrinks so much a, a tiny bubble is going to be a giant bubble by the time it actually cures all the way still I'm gonna keep going and I'll, I'll just cut out a few steps it's basically the same thing over and over watercolor rubber cement watercolor rubber cement you get the idea biggest problem with the rubber cement is that it is so rubbery so I'm gonna take some gloss varnish and just pour it on make a couple coats of that. And I mean, really, I'm gonna go crazy with this because, uh, you know, this, this stuff's gonna need some protection. If you're gonna use it, use protection, please. Because if you do, you might end up with something pretty nice. You probably don't wanna use this for ponds, but whatever. It will definitely work in a pinch. That's pretty much it. Not too difficult, a lot of waiting, smells really bad, but still. Pros and cons. Pro, it's pretty clear. Con, it's filled with bubbles. Pro, it took the color pretty well. Con, even with the protection on top, this stuff feels like a kneaded eraser just gave up. So in my opinion, sure, yeah, uh, you might want to use it. It might be useful. But not for this. Maybe for, I don't know, a magical well or just a small puddle, some slime or something. For this, though, I should probably find something else. You know what that means. More research.
course, until then, this is Rousseau Works. You've been watching Research What? And I'm Rousseau. Out.